Hi, everyone. Welcome to the session on Business Model Canvas, uh, which will be presented by me, Rohan, and Ankit. Um, thank you so much for joining. The people on the call, can you access the Miro board and can you see my screen? So what we wanted to do was start off with an icebreaker. And this is where I am at. See, you guys are on the left. Soumya and Srinanda, if you can come to the right, to this part of the board, which you can see on my screen, that'll be great. And if you guys have any questions, let me know. Let's do one thing. Yeah, Soumya, you're moving to the right a little more. Yep, and same with Srinanda, if you can move to the right. And what you see on the board here is, let's start with this section, the icebreaker. Uh, would love to know where are you guys located right now. And to see what I'm talking about, please see the screen. Yep, you see a few sticky dots here. Just pick a few dots and put them wherever you are in the world right now. Awesome. So I see a lot of people in the US. Do we have anyone from Canada here? Awesome. Once you're done placing where you are right now, if you can scroll down, you'll see uh, a question for the years of experience that you have. There are stickies for plus ones here. If you can just bring them and pull them in whichever bucket you lie right now, that'll be great. Awesome. Thanks for doing that. Once you're done with that, there are two other questions. One is, what's your current role or title? And the other one is, what do you expect from this session? Take a minute and just jot down your thoughts. And at any part of the call, if you don't understand anything or have any questions, please feel free to either raise your hand or unmute yourself and ask the question. And, and please feel free to unmute and ask whatever you want, guys. This is supposed to be interactive. Yeah. Uh, uh, can you see what I've typed? Which one? Learning about Business Model Canvas? Yes. Yeah. Yep, definitely. OK. What do you know about? Do you know what it is? Uh, I think yes i've seen a few earlier times about business model canvas it basically shows what resources founders might be having and how they have to utilize those resources something like that yeah wow 
Awesome. There's another question. What people expect is why business model canvas? Great. We will cover that. Then we talk about it. Awesome. What are the applications? Yep. The best part about business model canvas is you can apply it anywhere, not just in business, even for your personal life. You want to get anything done, you want to, I don't know, apply to jobs, you can have your own business model canvas. So it's applicable universally. We'll show you, we'll give you a few examples of how we can do that. Great. Thank you so much for the engagement, guys. And what I'll do is I'll pass it on to Rohan. And Rohan, I'm sharing my screen. I hope you can see it. And just let me know when to scroll. You're on mute. Can you hear guys hear me now? Yep. I think there's one slide which got moved or displaced. Uh, let me, I'll bring that up, no worries. <clears throat> Here we go, and we'll get started. This thing got repeated. Yeah. All right. So I just wanted to quickly give an introduction to the range of topics that we can cover, right? Uh, there is, we're obviously going to jump into, uh, you know, one main topic today. Uh, but I wanted to level set, you know, what we do as product managers. Uh, and this is something that I learned over the years. Uh, this is the these slides are a synthesis of what I have learned, what I've been taught to by people who are in product management roles. So obviously, this is not a complete encyclopedia of how product management works. Uh, but this is my experience. And then we'll keep building on that. As I learn more, I'll keep bringing in more here. So I think there's, there's always a especially for people coming in from tech background, there is a lot of focus on solving uh, a problem. Um, and there's a lot of focus on solving the problem for yourself. You know, you may not be happy with an app. You may not be happy with uh, the way a device works at your home. And you may want to solve it for you. Coming, a lot of us are engineers over here coming at it from a technology perspective. It's always fun to solve those problems. But I think what makes a good product in my experience is something that solves a problem for a market instead of just one or two customers. I think there's a place for uh, those kind of solutions for one or two customers, which comes in more through services and consulting kind of uh, modes. But when you really talk about a product that you want to scale, it needs to be solving a problem for a market. And at the same time, it needs to be serving the business, right? And I think this this is, you'll see this kind of behavior in like large companies where uh, there are a lot of product lines. You have a lot of resources to go and build whatever you want, but a lot of products just wither out. They don't get the scale. They don't get put into the hands of the sales force or the sales team is not excited to pick them up. And this is probably because it does not align with the overall goals of the organization. So what's a good product? It solves a problem. It solves a problem for a market. And it serves the business in the sense that it is aligned towards the business strategy of the entire organization and not just you know within your own team or a group of people who may think that there is a few customers for whom they can go and solve that problem. So in that sense, uh, you know, what what do product managers do? I think before we come to what do product managers do, I think it's it's good to look at what does a product team do, uh, because there's there's always this focus on the product manager being able to bring clarity to each and every situation. Uh, I think that can be true in certain cases where you're building a very specialized product and you have hired you know someone who's invented a specific technology like. You know, if you look at the Google rank search engine, uh, rank search algorithm, um, the founders who wrote that algorithm may be able to write the first search, uh, uh, you know, capability. But as you start growing it as a business, 
maybe they are not the right people to uh, think of all the different possibilities. So in that sense, it's very important to think about product management or or the 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 journey of building a product to be more of a team rather than you know just the pm being at the center of it so it's it's mainly it depends on different uh, industries uh, you know whether you're in consumer whether you're in like pharmaceuticals but there's always a collaboration of people who are subject matter experts which comes from the in the in the tech space it comes from the dev and design uh, so, sorry the dev design and the data science teams uh, design leading more of the user experience part and like the user research part uh, and dev and data science bringing more of the te core technology skills and product management being there to you know make the decisions on you know where you're going how you're going to go there and who the stakeholders etc are so I'll, I'll come to that a little later but as a product team you know everyone shares the the core responsibility of you know defining together what you need to build, you know, discovering and designing what you need to build and eventually building and going through the motions of maintaining it. And in in like growing up as a product manager, I've been in different situations where I've thought that I need to do certain things and I need to lead the way in, you know, defining and discovering. And then I'll hand it off and then, you know, dev goes and does something and design goes and does something. Uh, it's 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 not been a great experience that way. I think the best outcomes that we have seen is where the entire team is solving the same customer problem uh, and they're motivated by a single outcome. And all these three people, you know, they, they have their certain skills, they know their boundaries, and it's, it's the job of the product manager to make sure that it is clear and how we are bringing those team together. Um, and finally, uh, you know, before I pass it on to Tanvir, uh, I think there are very simply put, there are three buckets where you can think about how product management can add value. Like number one is vision, and number two is execution, and number three is communication. Vision in the sense, like where are we going and why is this the right problem to solve? I, I think spending a lot of time here and making sure that you got this right before you know you spin up a team, you start building building designs, writing code. Is is very valuable. I think there's there's a lot of, uh, especially in the in the tech industry again. Like there is a lot of uh, talk about move fast and break things and like you know doing things iteratively or jumping into building and and product led kind of philosophies. I think they're all good. They all have their places in 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 the right context when used. But there's no substitute for having a clear vision and making sure where you're going and why the the problem that you're solving is the right problem to solve. So in that sense, there are you know a lot of tools, and you know we may go through some of these tools in the in the future sessions. You know, there's like Porter's Five Forces, uh, Business Model Canvas is something that we're going to discuss today. Uh, this how do you do comparative analysis? How do you do market sizing? So these are all tools. It's not necessary that you learn every framework and you know use the exact framework. I think it's it's very context dependent, and as you as you build and ship more products you learn like which context uh, is which framework is useful for which context and how do you make use of these tools uh, similarly with execution right like product managers need to set uh, how do we want to execute like what is what is success at a given stage how are we going to measure it and what actions do you need to take it and in that sense there are again tools like prioritization frameworks there are there are like tons of prioritization frameworks. Uh, I don't think I know all of them, uh, but you know, again, it depends on what you, on your situation, on what you want to choose. There is, you know, things like experimentation and A/B testing. Uh, in the recent years, with uh, a lot of consumer products, uh, there has been specialized roles in product management for growth, and these guys do experimentation. They do A/B testing. So, you know, if you are interested in that kind of a role where uh, you like to do a lot of analytics, you like to work with a lot of data, I think that's a great role uh, to, you know, be a part of a product team and lead that area for growth. So that's that's like the second pillar for execution. And the third one, communication, I think this is probably the most important ones, right? Like who are the stakeholders? How are we going to hold each other accountable? And I think there is there's also an intangible piece over here in which 
at some point of time you need to be a quarterback not only managing the work but also how the team is gelling together what the emotions are on the team and how do you drive them you know to be productive but uh, at the same time you know not turn into uh, a, a team which is always fighting and and backstabbing and stuff like that so i think that it also comes with with seniority as you're progressing through the product roles on you know as you as you take on more responsibility and as you are uh, you know managing people uh, uh, it becomes more important but nevertheless uh, inherently product management is a leadership role and you should be thinking about these things all the time right like how do you communicate how do you make trade offs um how do you give feedback uh, i think all of these are like really important um i don't think you need to wait to do some of these things till you get into a formal leadership role uh the more you do this uh, in in whatever level you are at in product management uh the better you train yourselves to be in a leadership role so i'll i'll pause here uh, let's see if there are any questions uh but yeah essentially this is this is the framework under which we plan to operate like you know give us feedback if this is what you are we you were looking to get mentored on and we can pick like one topic every session and and we can go deeper into that thanks ron guys you have, do you have any questions so far no awesome so let's and if you have any questions put it in chat and you know raise your hand how you want to do it let's move on to now a few tools that an entrepreneur or a an innovator or a product manager can use and i always put all of these guys in the same bucket so you can still see my screen right yes yeah so i teach a course at carnegie mellon university to masters of business intelligence and data analytics students in the mesim program and all of them they want to be data scientists they want to be machine learning engineers but and some of you may want to be product manager some of you may want to be project managers program managers whatever you want right but what i think tell those my data science students is don't think like a data scientist but think like a ceo and take an end to end view if you look at this diagram here there are a lot of things to actually bringing a product to market a product or service or anything in life you know even yourself if you're looking at yourself for yourself for career growth there are different buckets that you need to play in and whenever we talk about data science software development that's mostly playing in this agile product development bucket which is a very small bucket but here we need to broaden our horizons and broaden our mindset because there are different components that we need to take care of understand what is your product strategy analyze product opportunities discover what you are going to do design a business model then do agile uh, product development then you have to take the product to market you have to manage your partner ecosystem and finally you have to manage the life cycle of your product from growth to saturation to decline and then bye bye shut off so this is these are the different components that we can again as rohan said in the latter sessions we can touch upon each and every and to do these things we need certain frameworks we need certain tools and that is what we are calling as tools of an entrepreneur so what are they rohan already touched on a few and here on the screen you can see your 3 c's 4 p's you have your swot analysis you have your porters five forces you have a ton you know a ton of uh, a net of frameworks that you can use but has anyone heard about the 80 20 rule the pareto principle uh i have heard that only 20% of the work may lead to 80% of the results perfect and uh, agnishwaran what do you say yeah same with respect to quality defects i have heard this like 80% of problems are caused by 20% of defects so you know the universe is imbalanced okay you can try to bring balance to it but it will shift towards one side look at around us and uh, this uh, uh, look at the planets around us all the mass is in less than 1% of total space but everything else is space let's look at the earth majority of the wealth is with less than 1% of the people 99% of the people imbalanced very low in wealth defects agnishwaran as you mentioned right majority of the defects happen in certain aspects so concentrate on that so similarly we have say 10 tools or frameworks that we can use 
only one of two of them are going to be something that really adds value and that you use way more often than others and in my perspective business model canvas is one of them so that's why when we want to there are 10 things to do and you want to do certain things it's always better to prioritize and only optimize and what do you say concentrate your energy in the things that add true value so that's why today we are touching on business model canvas and later on we can touch on all these other models also but this is just my perspective okay i think this model is so important and it's like a one tool that solves a lot of problems so before we even get into the canvas let me ask you guys what is a model forget about business model canvas three words right what is a model any kind of model we do data science right we do any other kind of modeling mathematical modeling statistical modeling what does model mean somya go and then sarthak Mm. It's a um I, mean, I don't know if I'm uh, you know uh, uh, telling right but yeah uh probably it's a skeleton as how the organization uh works like the interaction between different channels perfect it's a skeleton i love that keyword shrinanda something like a framework awesome yep uh, you are all on the correct track and right sarthak uh yeah a model is basically an abstract representation of anything that we see in the real world so it can be so a representation in our minds using some principles like maybe mathematical principles or anything else awesome abstract principle okay something which is abstract that can happen it's in our mind or it can be on a paper or somewhere else agnish varan yes then we also had similar thoughts as sarthak and uh, uh, srinanda yeah. awesome so let's make it really simple say you are henry ford okay the person who started ford motor company and you want to make a car that is accessible to everyone at that time in 1900s cars were super expensive people never used to have them you want to make an accessible car so henry ford he must have sat down on a paper and started drawing what would my car look like he would have said how much will this uh, cost who will buy it things like that so on paper he must have put some idea about his car he must put up some ideas about how am i going to manufacture them so this is all on paper but he hasn't done that yet right so my interpretation is anything that is on a paper that can be just picked up and then executed in real life that is a model it can be a mathematical model any kind of a model so business model canvas it is a canvas which gives us a framework as someone said exactly where you put it on paper that if my business had to run it's not running right now imagine how would it be what are the major components that i need to take care of and that's what the business model canvas helps us to do but let us quickly look at a few videos to align ourselves and what this is all of you were absolutely right about what a model is so what's a business model it describes the rationale of how an organization creates value delivers value and captures value and yes you are absolutely right blueprint is again the right keyword so if you hear you see there are three keywords an organization how does an organization create value so creating value is common sense right there are some customers there are some market they have some needs and you're trying to create some value for them uh, maybe the need can be that hey it takes me 2 hours to reach my work so by creating some value you can reduce the, their uh, work like time to reach work by an hour so you are actually creating some value then deliver value deliver is now now you actually have say buses that go faster that have better routes that take them to uh, what do you say their location an hour earlier so now you are delivering value what does capture value mean uh, maybe get customers okay maybe get customers yep you are on the right track anyone else what does capturing value mean so by feedback sorry feedback yeah definitely one of them so what does a business do it's the purpose of a business is to make money at the end of the day right so you're creating value you're delivering value and capturing value means that money that comes into your pocket and the uh, what do you say the inflow of cash 
So that is what. Sorry. Yeah, return on investment. Okay. Exactly, because you are running a business, so you have created value, delivered value. But if you can't make money on it, you will not be able to do this for a long time. You will do it for a month, and then you'll you're out of cash, right? So how do you capture value efficiently so that the business can grow? Things like that. So these are a few things you need to think about. So this is what a business model is. And now let's look at the canvas. Some of you may have seen this canvas. It has certain. It's a framework. It's a blueprint. It has different aspects to it. And what you need to think about is think about those aspects and then start doing them. I can do a good job at explaining this, but better than hearing me, it's better that you hear this video. And let me do one thing. So, um, tell me if I'll play it again. First, just tell me if uh, it's audible to everyone. Was it audible? No. No, right? Okay. So let me do another thing once again. An organization's business model can be described with nine base. Could you hear that? Awesome. Cool. organization's business model can be described with nine basic building blocks your customer segments your value proposition for each segment the channels uh, to i cannot see them, anything customer relationships One second. established with the customer segments can other people see things i can see though i am able to see interesting. okay yeah interesting Sarthak, you can't. You still can't see it. Uh, no. One second. Uh, I can. You can send the link in the chat. I can see on my own computer. So oh, let me do that. Thanks. An organization's business model can be described with nine basic building blocks. Your customer segments, your value proposition for each segment, the channels to reach customers, customer relationships you establish, the revenue streams you generate, the key resources and key activities you require to create value, the key partners, and the cost structure of the business model. But it's not sufficient to just enumerate the nine building blocks. What you really want to do is to map them out on a pre-structured canvas. This is what we call the business model canvas, a tool that helps you map, discuss, design, and invent new business models. Let's briefly go through the nine building blocks, starting with the customer segments. These are all the people or organizations for which you're creating value. This includes simple users and paying customers. For each segment, you have a specific value proposition. These are the bundles of products and services that create value for your customers. The channels describe through which touch points you're interacting with customers and delivering value. The customer relationships outline the type of relationship you're establishing with your customers. Revenue streams make clear how and through which pricing mechanisms your business model is capturing value. Then you need to describe the infrastructure to create, deliver, and capture value. The key resources show which assets are indispensable in your business model. The key activities show which things you really need to be able to perform well. The key partners show who can help you leverage your business model, since you won't own all key resources yourself nor you perform all key activities. Then once you understand your business model's infrastructure, you'll also have an idea of its cost structure. So with the business model canvas, you can map out your entire business model in one image. This works for startup entrepreneurs just as well as for the most senior executives. Great. Did that make sense?
Men kan ju alla alla upgrade tandvir som en. Of course, yes, but yes, I'll do that. What I'm doing is um, that was a video. In the chat, I have posted this one link, which is the one-stop shop. I would say, uh, great book which talks about business model generation. Has a lot of images. You can scroll through it. Again, eighty twenty rule, right? There are certain resources that add a lot of value to your learning. I think this is definitely one of them. So you should definitely look into that. We saw the business model canvas. There's another canvas called the value proposition canvas, which is also a great tool for an entrepreneur. There is a link to the video on the uh, what do you say Miro board. We will not be going into that, but this is another one that you can look at. So let's let me quickly elaborate on what a business model canvas does. Right, there are these separate segments. Any kind of a business product, anything that you are creating, who are you creating it for? So that's super important. Understanding the profile of your customer, what is it that they want? What is their age? What is their gender? I don't know. You have to profile the different customers, and then say you may have two or three different customer profiles. based on that what is the value that you are providing to them what are they looking for what challenges do they have what gains do they desire so then you start putting some stickies okay on what the value proposition is then you have to figure about what kind of relationship do i want to maintain with my customer and let's take an example say if you are a bank in a bank what are the different types of customers that come to a bank what are the different customer profiles that banks target can someone answer like what are the different types of customers go for it agnisharan yeah uh, first segment would be the college students who would like to have bank college account. students awesome mm -hmm. second is the working professional who would like to have their salary credited perfect and third person is the one who is focusing on investment goals like uh, lovely. who are the account lovely and all of these three so students less than i would say 100 uh, or 10000 dollars in the bank then prof working professionals less than i don't know half a million dollars in the bank and then there would also be high net worth individuals 3 million plus 5 million 10 million plus in the bank so these are your different customers and each customer wants different kinds of things so we have to figure out what is the value that i'm providing to everyone so for students what will it be ease of access uh, say low charges for keeping very low amounts in your account things like that so you have to provide that value to them then comes your uh, say high net indiv individuals they don't want you to have a booth in a college where 10 100 people can come and talk to you they want one on one interaction they want a customer service representative that will be talking to them and giving them personalized attention whereas the students don't need that so you have to think about what are your profiles what are they looking for and what kind of relationship do you want to build with them do you want a one on one relationship do you want a self service platform or a website right or do you just want email communication you have to figure out the channels how you'll reach out to them are you going to their house are you going to invite them for lunches dinners are you or are you just going to set a booth in a college in a new college uh, where people are coming in and you try to get them as your customers so this is these are few things you have to think about then what resources do you need right if you're running a bank what do you need you need so many things you need infrastructure you need partnerships with other banks you need partnership with the government things like that do you need certain resources what activities do you need to do you need to make sure that the money is safe right people are putting their money in you need to make sure that money gets transferred quickly you need to make sure that uh, the databases get updated quickly there's so many activities that you need to do some of the activities is you actually have to maintain customer relationships with people so you put those things down in stickies and then who are your key partners different banks governments uh, third party apps and uh, things like that how much is all this going to cost and how are you going to generate revenue so this canvas tells you if you are running a business in the real life these are the different buckets and these are the things i'm going to do that sets your hypothesis now it is actually going out there and testing this business model that you have created in the real life and some things may not work then you'll come back you'll tweak tweak your model here you'll say oh maybe i didn't have those three customer segments maybe i just had two and then you'll tweak a few things and then you'll again go so business model canvas is a canvas that you can use to keep reinventing your business models uh who had asked me the question somya does yeah. that i uh, know uh, it helps uh, thank you uh, tanvi awesome. uh, one other quick uh, question sorry if it is like you know no no definitely go for it uh, is thank you for the elaborating but 
how does i understand like you know what is business model but how does this is aligned to our project manage sorry product management life cycle perfect so now let's do an exercise quickly okay all of us today we decide that hey let's come together we want to make extra money in life and uh, we have certain skill sets i am great at making lemonade okay and you guys bring different skill sets uh, to the table so i want to build a lemonade stand okay that's what i want to build and i need all of your help to help build that lemonade stand so let's do a quick exercise let's figure out if we had to start a new business today it's lemonade stand could be anything we could start the next google how are we going to start it and then you can use this exercise later to see now something is already started how do you maintain it and then how do you bring it towards the end so let's start a new business today okay lemonade stand everyone ready raise your hands if you all are ready awesome great everyone's ready so let's make a lemonade stand today so the, let's set some ground rules where are we opening a lemonade stand i see that we have in, people from india as well as from the us so let us say there is some common country okay where uh, let's imagine where you guys actually tell me where do you want to open a lemonade stand israel sorry where in somewhere in israel where israel. is that israel oh you want to open an is israel wait let's just put it here and where in israel like around what place tell me what is around there maybe in tel aviv the capital city in tel aviv in in the city okay you want to set it up in the city okay set up in city cool okay so this now we have to think around this okay so we are going to start a business in tel aviv and set it up in the city and i'm thinking let's do like a downtown where there are high rises people come to work all of that okay so there's a lot of footfall awesome great location thank you so much for picking that for the team so now let's think about who will be our customers who are they who are we going to serve through the lemonade stand so now either uh, yeah just unmute yourself start telling me who those customers are and i can start putting them on the sticky right here lemonade lovers <laughs> lemonade lovers okay lemonade lovers awesome who else uh uh the professionals who come out of work awesome. breaks during the summer uh, yeah. lunch yes of professionals in the city who are coming into work going out who else uh like the workers who physically like um, the people who do the manual work right like you know who are stressed out or yes manual workers uh, who are say construction workers let me put that in your students students are awesome yes because it's a city of course there will be some educational institutes out there some classes like kaplan gmat prep or no what not so students cool particularly the travelers like uh, those who are being traveling in bike car uh, thing like that for a long distance they might stop at here awesome some travelers rohan go for it uh tourists Oh, it's perfect because it's a city, right? Again, people are coming in to see, like, how does the city look like in Israel? So cool. So yes. So let's stop here. So say we we can have tons of them. Of course, we need to prioritize who are we going for. So let's say that professionals are going to come in every day. Students are going to come in every day, right? Then tourists and travelers, they are the same. So I'm putting them here. Construction workers are going to be there every day. So let me put them as our second priority. And then lemonade lovers, for definitely, okay, they can come here. so awesome so these are our customers now we have it on the map then in the there is this uh, canvas that i was talking about value proposition canvas it helps you understand exactly what value are these guys looking for but we don't have time to do that right so let's assume right now what are these guys looking for so what are these guys looking for during the day why will they come to a lemonade stand what is their problem that you want to solve we can either target just for these guys or we can say as a group so let's say what what value are you guys providing how are you making their lives easier what problem are you solving what needs are you satisfying dehydration dehydration that is awesome dehydration tell me why don't i think it must be hot you know because it's closer to the i don't know tropic of capricorn or something like that so so for professional cancer, cancer not the thing perfect 
Sorry. Maybe providing instant energy. One second. So uh, who who started first? What who was? I think it was me. Ah, she number go for it. So I think for professionals, it'll work like an alternative coffee break, probably for those who don't drink coffee or are bored of it. Awesome, so awesome. Alternate coffee break. Someone's on a, I don't know, they're just trying to get away from coffee. Uh, Agnishwaran, was it you? Who was next? Yes, I said maybe uh, having some instant uh, uh, energy, like getting instant some instant energy. energy. Awesome. You want to give them some energy. So then you have to think about in your lemonade, what else can you put, right? Something like that. But yeah, you want to give them instant energy, dehydration, thirsty right people must be thirsty they are roaming around doing touristy work so they are thirsty maybe what they want to do is uh, yeah in, uh, coffee break alternate coffee break i just want to go out maybe people used to smoke now they don't want to smoke but they want a place where they can huddle and do something so yeah these are all great points okay so let's say this is the value that we are trying to provide them what else i can think about a sweet Treat, right people are always looking for sweet treats so making it sweet what could people look for they could look for making it sure that it's low calorie right but it depends on the uh, what do you say uh, market in tel aviv right now if it was in uh, san francisco we would definitely going for zero calorie things like that vegan all of that okay so we understand now and again these are hypotheses that we are setting and then we have to go and test and then something will work something will not work then we'll remove those things from our business model and we'll keep reinventing it until we find something that works business starts and then again uh, when the money starts flowing in again you have to revisit your business model are we doing the right thing should we be going for more customers what value do they want what channels do we create things like that okay so we know our customers we know what they want now tell me two things what kind of a relationship do you want to build with these guys? Do you want to be one and one people come in or do you want to be, uh, I don't know, one for many? Uh, what kind of relationship do you want to build and what channels are you going to use to reach out to them and tell them that, that hey, we exist and we exist here to so go for it. Let's talk about the channels. How will you reach out to folks? Maybe we can use banners in front of uh, critical landmarks so that it would showcase that we have laminate in and around here. Awesome. So banners, landmarks, what else? Online advertising, maybe. Yeah, social media, definitely put videos of people enjoying themselves in the heat. Try to do a Coke-like ad where you have a glass and you're pouring water. There are ice bubbles on top. People are salivating, things like that. So yes, yeah, we can use social media, Insta, Facebook, things like that. What else? The paper, the pamphlets. Awesome. Yes. So we can use other, uh, what do you say, paper or uh, what's that? some digital media, which is not digital. Yeah. Paper media, something like that. I think word of mouth helps a lot. Word of mouth. Definitely. Awesome. So once you think about word of mouth, then you need to figure out things to get it out. Right. So awesome. Word of mouth. Great. So these are, I would say, a few things. Buses. That buses yes. And what do you mean by buses? Like stick stick an ad on the side of the bus. Ads on buses and trains and wherever, right? Anything that's, again, so when you say buses, say if you're in Tel Aviv, but there is a bus service that doesn't run there. So of course you won't put it on there, right? So you have to think mm -hmm. about that. What kind of bus, trains, the trains that are coming in and out of that platform target those, so things like that. So we do that. Then what kind of relationships now do you want to maintain uh, with people? Will you, and by relationships, let me help you out. So people are coming on, right? Maybe they have some questions. So do you want to have someone who is a dedicated attendant or just do you want to have a board, a self-explanatory board that people can just come read and then figure out their stuff? So that's on you to decide, right? So what kind of, since it's your store and since uh, Agnishwar and you decided the location, what kind of relationship do you want to have? I guess initially, uh, maybe we have a dedicated resource uh, targeting the customers. Uh, later, we can move on to having automated vending machines. Oh, that's lovely. So we have a customer service rep. Then we have an automated. So that's future awesome. But of course, if you can, you need to pull it down, put it on here because you need to start thinking about it. So automated vending machines, right? And then you can have, say, websites or things like that for people to know what's happening. Great. So we have figured out what relationship do we want. Now let's see what resources do we need. 
to set up our stand. What resources? The raw material required to make awesome. the lemonade in sufficient quantity. Yep, so that's your ingredients and raw materials, right? So you need them. Okay. What else do you need? Tools required, like uh, machinery, lemonade squeezer. Yes, squeezer. So that would be your um, machinery. Awesome. And uh, that would also include your mixer and things like that. Yep, IS boxes, all of that. Who who else was had unmuted themselves? I was uh, talking to Anvir. The mm. funds, like the money, uh, you need to set awesome. up the stand, right? Yep, yep. You need budget and uh, money to set it up, definitely. Then uh, what else? Also, we require human resource for uh, of course handling this activity. Yeah. Yeah. So we require each uh, uh, people. And then we also require a stand, right? A location, a physical asset, something like that. So, seating and all of that. What was that? Seating, depending upon yeah, how you. And, uh, yep, yep. And so you have to think about it. Yeah, exactly. It's like, do you want people to sit? Yeah, definitely. So, we put all of these things on here. Okay. I'm not reducing the size right now, but you know what these things are. Great. And then, what activities do we now need to do? So, of course, for, uh, go ahead. What activities do we need to do? Uh, initially, we have to do promotion. Awesome. So I'm adding promotion. Who else? Setting up all the infrastructure required for the business. Set up infra. What else? Here, what what do you mean by activities, Stanley? Like, what, what would be the scope? Is it here? How do you make or? Um... All of that. So what are the key steps to move ahead for to your customers? Production, platform, network, anything, right? So uh, yes, you'll need to make lemonade. That is one of the key activities, right? Make lemonade that tastes good. It shouldn't taste like crap. So you do that. And then you will set up your, uh, say, website or something like this. So you need to maybe set up your website. Set up website. Maybe you'll need to, um, you need to hire this? a team. Exactly, hire a team, send it out, uh, uh, send out some communication. So all the to-dos that you need to do. So now this is getting tactical. We are away from strategy now. What do we need to do? So you would list down all those activities that you need to do, start doing them. Then what partnerships do we need? Because we are creating, we are opening a lemonade stand in Tel Aviv, right? So what partnerships do we need? Lemon, I mean, we need to buy lemons. Vendors, yep. So we need partnership with vendors. We need to buy the cheapest lemons and the freshest lemons because that is going to be our USP. Okay. What else? Or the machinery for the squeezing. Yes. So again, so I, I would count them as vendors. We need uh, machinery vendors okay. as well as, yep, these vendors. What else? What else do we Maybe need? Maybe we require a, a government approval so that we license. need to be in touch licensing. Exactly. License from government, right? You can do that. Then in the US, we have these um, uh, communities like Girl Scout cookies, things like that, where children come and sell stuff. I don't know. Maybe you can go and target these communities and have some partnerships with them. But that was just me throwing some idea. What else? What other kind of partnership would we need? And See here. So our key partners, they give us competitive advantage. And uh, uh, what are the motivations for people joining your partnership? Optimization, economies of scale and scope. So maybe you can partner with other lemonade stands or other drinks and food, maybe a burger stand that's next to you that doesn't sell lemonade. I don't know. You can create some joint marketing with them. So you can do that. Voluntary. Uh, we can target the corporate offices. One second. So, Agnishwaran and then uh, I think it was Swami. Agnishwaran, go for it. What are you saying? Uh, uh, partnership with the corporate officers so that we can have mass awesome. people. Awesome. Corporate offices, definitely. And you can have like flyers going to corporate offices during lunchtime or sending them some message, something like that. Awesome. And what are you saying, Samya? Uh, like generally, kids volunteer, right? Like, you know, they kind of... Uh -huh. uh, I, I don't know if uh, the school... You can tie up with schools, you know, for the volunteers. Maybe. I don't know how it works in Tel Aviv. But yeah, definitely. This is something that we can try, right? Awesome. So we put all this. 
this is how we are going to start a business tomorrow we go start doing all of these activities run a business we figure out that hey kids cannot volunteer so then we come we remove them from the canvas and we put something else on and we figure it out until we get awesome money back and awesome profit back and we add value and capture value and then it's easy cost structure make sure you put all the costs that will be associated there'll be a number here that number will be x and then whatever is your revenue stream that needs to be greater than x and you need of course there's a lot more that you need to go in here for but that's out of the scope today rohan what are you saying uh, i i have a hard stop in two minutes yeah, yeah definitely talk, but uh, i just wanted to add one comment mm -hmm. uh, uh, I think it was either Samya or Srinanda who asked the question, like, how do you use this in your job, right? Um, I think it, th this is this tool is mostly used uh, in either at the beginning of you know starting a new business inside a company. Like most in most cases, if you're not starting your own company, you would be working for a company, whether it's a startup or a big company. You know, you would be doing this exercise with your team at the beginning of of that idea, right? your your ceo or cpo may come up with an idea saying like hey if this is what we need to do this is how we go. you know these are some of the ideas here's where we need to build a business so the business model canvas is a good tool for the team to sit down and start discussing that so it's not like you know in a lot of organizations what happens is it's done as a way of process and you just go come in and present a business model canvas and everyone goes away. I think that's not the intent. As, as Tanvir mentioned, this is a place to, you know, record your assumptions, uh, you know, keep refining it, and it needs to be done as a teamwork. So it's it's mostly used at the beginning of a project or like as a or beginning of a launch of a business. And, you know, generally, product management is the team that brings together all this information at this stage. It's mostly product management working on its own, uh, you know, in that three circles that I showed. Here's where product management work starts and you start building this out on your own. Uh, when you have to make, you know, clarify assumptions on user experience or like what type of user persona and stuff, you start bringing in your designers uh, or m maybe not designers yet, but your, your user research team. And you start working with uh, them to, you know, figure out more details inside there. And like when it comes to implementation, like for example, in this case, how to make lemonade, you may need like a chef. The chef is the equivalent of dev or data science in in that picture. So those are some of the like that's how the the path progresses. Like you you start out on your own and you keep bringing in people as and when you need those subject matter experts. And I would also like to add one more point to it. So yes, it's very important at the start because like uh, if you don't do it it'll be problematic later but then sometimes we don't have the liberty to always start in a product which is like starting from zero to one like sometimes you're in the middle of it also and especially when you're trying to build your mark in the company most people have not done that so when you get into the company you're middle of the project you bring this clarity by making your own uh, business world canvas show it to your manager they will love it and then it will also remind everybody's thinking also. So yeah, it's not just for the start, in my opinion. Like sometimes, like there's something called a state of union. Like you want to give a state of union means like, like who are the customers, what are the activities and personas, etc. So just to bring that clarity, if you remember in those three circles, the last one was about you know, yeah, like the communication. Yeah. So so in the middle of the product or project also. You can do that, and and especially if you are a new employee in a company, you want to get uh, the understanding. That's also really helpful mm -hmm. for you, because rather than asking people this question, you have a really good framework which is available. So, thank you. Thank you, Rohan. Ankit, please continue your thought. And uh, Rohan, we'll touch base again. It was great. Thanks for introducing. And I'm on call. I can answer a few more questions. Ankit, please complete thank your you thought. Thank you very much. I think you know it's just. Uh, like uh, it's good from my side also. In fact, I will share one more resource here from Deb Blue. So Deb Blue is uh, the the CEO of Ancestry. So she has been journaling internally. She was an ex VP of Facebook. 
over a lot of years she has been journaling a uh, lot of this kind of concept around product management so she has now sharing this with the world also i'll share that link here also it's really helpful so this business model canvas is really great communication tool to gain alignment not only in the start but in the middle of the project and just for your own personal best i'll just share and i that. totally resonate with what ankit said see in story communication is one thing storytelling is a totally different asset there are frameworks around it how do you engage people how do you take them with you along the journey and this is a great tool for storytelling because in one picture you can paint the whole picture right now it's of course messy right but say we decide hey we are not going for tourists and travelers so you just have to work it so in one image the whole team gets aligned on what is it that we are trying to achieve here because the vision and the team to be aligned on what we are trying to achieve is super important in getting work actually done in improving productivity and improving mental health of people so i see a lot of benefits of this tool not just at the start but across the journey and for quick alignment and you can use it for your life as well right now say if you are applying to positions and roles who are your customers you write your facebooks your fans whoever you are going for what value are they trying to see so you put their values they want someone who has di digital skills someone who has new ways of working someone who has storytelling skills so you go and put it in the value there and make sure your resume and your stories have those values that you can bring to people what relationships do you want to build with them do you want to reach out to linkedin recruiters what channels are you going to use linkedin glassdoor what not right what activities do you need to do update resume get some recommendation letters things like that so you can do you can use this model for anything in life you want to plan a trip to tel aviv go plan it because who are your friends that you're taking along with you they are your customers you need them to be happy you need your trip to be happy use this anywhere you need to make food you want to make chicken biryani <laughs> use a business model canvas what kind of chicken biryani you're going to use so this tool can be used anywhere and as ankit said it is a great way of impressing your manager because not a lot of people use this see there are two things in life what you do so using a business model canvas but most important is how you do it right so that how you do it is the one that makes you stand apart from other people so this is a tool all four of you and people who will watch the recording know that this is a tool but what will set you apart is how you're going to use that tool to add value so that's on you and that is what your career journey you will improve you'll understand and you'll make you'll use the same tool in different ways going forward as you evolve so thank you so much for your time if anyone has a, has any questions let me know otherwise we'll see you soon i have one quick question sorry uh, is mm. uh, i know ankit was mentioning that you know we can use this at any point of the time right so does this change like because we do things iteratively right so can the business model be changed yes so, as well so think about it like uh, it's like the business is fluid like covid struck you saw what happened to pension stock right this went up like because they had to pivot so then your priorities definitely change so but at least the good thing is if you heard of that concept called misi like mutually like mutually exclusive cumulatively exhaustive so at least you have all the places uh, like all the different key points but you can deep down on one specific thing so you don't have a blind spot so this is a living document uh but like uh, but your focus could change like for example um all this zoom became so popular because if for covid like they started coming out with more and more features very quickly uh, uh but then now they are they are probably targeting b2c customers but now again they'll go back to their b2b customers so yeah but at least they know like what's happening so yeah it's business model converse is still evergreen it keeps evolving Okay. it's a living organism it's a living organism that evolves and changes and if it doesn't evolve well it shuts down i'll give you an example there is uh, there are so many uh, take for example nokia right nokia was a, everyone used nokia phones people knew that nokia is a great brand but then they failed to evolve because when apple came on they brought this entire platform and ecosystem with them but nokia did not have that business model they had a different one and then they lost their leadership race but let's look at microsoft microsoft earlier was already only building operating systems but now they are into cloud into so many other things right so they have evolved the business model and they are still a leader in the space so 
business model keeps evolving. If, if it evolves well, you'll go up. If it if it doesn't evolve or if it evolves not so well, you'll go down. So I hope that was not very discouraging. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Any other question? So is the are there different business models for each product or does the company have a single business model? Depends, but mostly different for every product uh, because you will have certain differences. Definitely, you can't, the, all the products, they don't serve the same customers. They don't serve them in the same way. They don't solve the same value, right? Otherwise, you'll just have one product. So every product, I would say, for whatever you are working on, create your own business model. Don't worry about what others have. But Ankit, what are you saying? Yeah, just to add a little bit more color to this, uh, think of a startup, a series A startup. They have one product called MLOps platform that they're building. So they may have one uh, business model canvas, but then if you're breaking down the features, you can have more. But think about Microsoft, as uh, Tanvi had said, like they had different product lines such as Xbox, uh, they will have Azure, they will have uh, like, what is it called? Like the Teams. So you can imagine, right? They all will have. So it all depends from. Uh, company to company, but technically it's always good to have a like a clarity around a business model for one specific product, two product, one product line, which will have multiple products. Ideally should have different business model, but they could be pretty similar. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I, I have one quick question. Like uh, does pricing decisions come under this business model canvas or like because we are focusing on revenue and cost, I'm not sure really where we are focusing on the pricing, or is it a separate detailed framework for that one? There is a separate detailed framework for that. Business model canvas is for painting a picture. You put your revenue is greater than X, but exactly how are you setting subscription models? You can put it on the canvas as well, but there are ways of uh, doing that too because that's a deeper analysis, right? But Ankit, what do you say? So if you look at the the revenue segment, right? So technically, if you think of your uh, key, uh, like a uh, keyboard or a laptop or a mouse, you are double clicking on the revenue, and there you can have different uh, pricing strategies. You can have subscription based pricing, you have value based pricing, you have cost plus pricing, and all. But yeah, like so. So revenue stream. When you say that, like my revenue stream is to get uh, like uh, like look at a credit card. Like a credit card's revenue streams are a they make money from the yearly uh, subscription fee. Number two, they make money from the ro rollover. So they all have a different uh, business model for them. But yeah, this is at a more high level, so you'll go more deep into uh, in the revenue stream. You'll double click on that for coming up with different pricing techniques. Yeah. And just Thank to add, so if we look at our uh, uh, lemonade stand example itself, one revenue could be, say, a subscription that corporate offices have some subscription. You keep sending them on a weekly basis, uh, keep their coolers full. You can have a retail, right? Your thing becomes really good. So now you start sending it into retail, into all the Safeways, Walmarts that are in Tel Aviv. And what you can also do is then start it on your website, right? Have a website where people can buy it, purchase it. You can start a what a franchisee model with it. Right? You can if it works out really well. So all of this you can put in here. But then of course this is not a very detailed look because storytelling. This is for storytelling and for alignment. And these things need to be crisp and clear and not too detailed. It should be high level to align everyone. So yeah, for details, there are other things that we can get into later. But this is just overview, uh, ten thousand feet view of what's happening in your business. Yep. Now I got a much more clarity than earlier. Perfect. Great job, everyone. Thanks for your engagement. I hope this was helpful, and we and give us uh, feedback, and we hope to make it better next time. Thank you. Thanks, Ankit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Over to uh, supporting our community to make them even better at what they're doing. Definitely. And maybe, then, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Maybe we can come up with use case and then send it to you guys and then see how, you know, just to get practice of 
for this yeah get, get, make a problem statement make a business model send it to us um short and wait sure rank awesome have a good one guys thank you yeah. thank you so much tanveer and ankit bye thanks tanveer and ankit